Welcome to sunny Tampa Bay. As the Tampa Bay Rays try and salvage a split of this four game series with the Boston Red Sox here at Sunkiss Field. The Rays won the opener between these two teams, but have dropped the last two getting shelled both nights. So they're hoping Luis Castillo can Keep conjuring up some of the magic that he has had in the early going. Nolan Arenado, another new acquisition who has played really well in the early going here. Hitting 333 with three homers to his name. And so we'll start the game with Castillo. As mentioned, he has pitched well, having 16 innings recorded through his first two starts with a 1-0 record and a 1.13 ERA. He was a tough luck loser his first time out to the Tigers. But won his last start and seems primed to continue his strong form here. As Christian Arroyo hitting 372 will lead us off. He swings to the first pitch he sees, then grounds one to first. Arenado playing first base as Rays manager Kevin Cash plays Jenga with the starting lineup trying to get some people days off and get some people rest as we look at the Boston lineup. Christian Arroyo, as mentioned, hitting in the high 300s, but otherwise some paltry averages there for the Bo Sox. So we'll see if any of those guys can get going. Rob Refsnyder will stride to the plate and swing through a slider. Good pitch by Castillo there. So Refsnyder is retired. And to our way here in the first is Justin Turner, longtime veteran, strides to the plate, and Turner's going to rip one down the third baseline past a diving Brandon Crawford. Crawford made a game effort for it, but couldn't quite get there, and Turner will have his second double of the season. The Red Sox have their first hit of the day, and the visitors are in business here in the top of the first. Raphael Devers, fresh off of signing a huge extension this past offseason, will stride to the plate. Devers will chop one up the middle. Castillo, good play there to snatch it. Throws on to first to retire Devers. And Castillo is out of the top of the first. One hit, but no runs. Tampa will come to hit with a score still tied at zero. Garrett, Whit Garrett Whitlock will be towing the rubber for the Red Sox today. Whitlock, like Castillo, has impressed through his first two starts. 2.08 ERA and 15 strikeouts in only 13 innings. So it's an impressive K per nine stat that Whitlock's putting up in the early going here. Wander Franco will lead us off. Swing through a sinker. Good pitch by Whitlock there, finding the top of the zone. So the count is one and two on Franco. The Rays leadoff header will take a sinker outside. Moving the count to two and two. And take another pitch outside. This one a circle change, so the count goes full. 3-2 to Franco. Ooh, perfect pitch. Circle change right on the low inside corner of the zone. Franco thought he had ball four. Started skipping down to first, but... Home plate umpire said not so fast, rung him up, and Wander is retired. Yandy Diaz will stand in and hit a change up a mile high but foul. So the count's two and two on Yandy. And he, in almost a carbon copy of Justin Turner's hit, is going to lace one down the line. However, it doesn't quite get as far as Turner's did. Masataka Yoshida did a nice job cutting that one off. So Diaz is limited to a single, but a well-hit single. Well, the Rays are hoping that Diaz can get going. He shows great promise as a high contact hitter, but has been struggling in the early going here. Nolan Arenado will stand in and take two pitches outside for a walk. So the Rays have... A man in scoring position here as Chris Bryant really struggling in the early going. Only hit 150 right now, steps in. Bryant's going to smash one. 
First pitch he sees is a hanging circle change, and that one is deposited over the wall and right. It's gone. A three-run homer and a huge start for Tampa Bay here. Bryant's fifth on the season. I have to double check, but it's possible all of his hits have been home runs. And that is just the start the home team was looking for here. 97 miles out, miles an hour off the bat. Bryant went the other way with it. Most of his homers have been to the pole field so far this year. But he sat back on that changeup and did not miss it. So great start for the Rays as Ian Happ stands in. Happ will swing through a circle change. Whitlock already at 22 pitches with only one out here in the first, so that's also a nice sign for the Rays. The three runs is probably a more important sign of success, but if they can get Whitlock's pitch count up early and get into that Red Sox bullpen, which has been used extensively over the course of this series, portend good things as Hap strikes out on a sinker low. And Yan Gomes will stand in. Salvador Perez getting the day off today. So we'll see the Rays backup catcher. Gomes will take outside. And then take a sinker just on the corner. So the count will be two and two. Slider misses way outside. So another Rays hitter has forced Whitlock to go deep into a count. This next pitch will be his 30th. Gomes fouls away a circle change. He was out in front of it, but was still able to make contact. So we'll do it again. 3-2 is lined to second. Arroyo is there. Quick reflexes by the former Ray. Keeps Gomes off the board, but the damage is already done. Chris Bryant, three-run shot, his fifth of the season. And Tampa leads early, 3-0. Masataka Yoshida will lead us off. Free agent acquisition this past off season out of Japan. He's gotten off to a decent start, hitting 258. And it looks like he's going to get on the board again as he chops one at the middle. Castillo stabs at it but misses it. And then Franco dives. He misses it as well. So evading gloves in, pr in impressive fashion. And Yoshida is on the board here to lead off the second. Following him will be Sedan Rafaela. The sweet fielding rookie out of Curacao. He's going to fly the first pitch he sees to left. Half has it all the way. Makes the catch. So Rafaela is retired. The catcher, Connor. catcher Connor Wong will be next. Wong off to a tough start this year. Hitting only 132. As Castillo burns in a sinker. Excellent pitch there for a called strike two. Slider is fouled away. Wong is all over that one. He laces it to center. Rosa Reina does a nice job to cut it off. So while Yoshida will get to third, Wong will be held at first. But the Red Sox are in business. And for all the hype that we lathered on both Castillo and Whitlock... In the early going, both have struggled. Extra base hits flying off the bats. Enrique Hernandez will try and drive in Yoshida from third. He'll take the first pitch he sees inside, so the count is full. The 3-2 to Hernandez fouled away. Castillo dialed one up there, reaching triple digits for the first time today. We'll see if he goes back to it. He does not, but he throws a sinker, locates it beautifully. And Hernandez is going to pop it up. Arenado's got it all the way. Huge out to get there. As Yoshida has to stay at third. Wong stays at first, naturally. And that's a big second out as David Hamilton, the rookie, will stand in with a 2-2 count. And he's going to strike out looking. Beautiful circle change. So for the second consecutive inning, Castillo sees a man get in the scoring position and then wiggles out of it. We head to the bottom of the second. The Rays still leading 3-0.
Brandon Lau will lead us off. One of the longer tenured Rays amid this unprecedented roster turnover. Lau most commonly associated with his World Series heroics from a couple of years prior. Where it seemed like he just couldn't stop hitting homers. Lau will take a couple pitches out of the zone, so he's got a 3-1 count here. I know it's a count he's historically loved to swing at. But he has nothing to hit here as a sinker misses the zone. So Lau is on base. The Rays have their second walk of the afternoon. And Randy Rosarena playing center field. In a change of pace today, will stand in. He'll pop the first pitch he sees up to third. No trouble at all for Devers. As the Red Sox third baseman puts it away. So Rosarena is retired. Whitlock gets his first out of the inning. Brandon Crawford will stride to the plate, hitting 500 in the early going here. Kind of a funny quirk and something that, you know, oftentimes only happens in April as a breaking ball out of the zone skips past Wong all the way to the backstop. So Lau will take second. Both Crawford and David Hamilton, the two nine hitters today, came in hitting 500. So... Certainly a small sample size for both, but not a stat line you often see with nine hitters, let alone two of them in the same game. Crawford's going to ground one a third. Hit well, but Devers plays it perfectly. Makes the play, throws over to Hamilton, and retires Crawford. Lau must stay at second on that one. So Crawford squared it up. Made good contact, but unfortunately was right at Devers. So we'll see if Franco can come through as he follows away the first pitch he sees, a sinker. So the count's one and two on Franco. Whitlock goes back to the sinker, added a couple miles an hour to that one, but it's outside all the way, so two and two is the count. Ooh, another sinker gets Franco. So for the second time this afternoon, the Rays leadoff hitter has struck out looking. Whitlock also wiggles out of trouble. We'll head to the top of the third with your score still Tampa Bay 3, Boston 0. Top of the order here for the Red Sox. Christian Arroyo swings through a sinker. And then takes a slider way outside. So the Red Sox second baseman has a full count here. And he's going to pop one over first. A classic Texas Leaguer bloop single there for Arroyo. No complaints from him or the Red Sox, I'm sure. They won't be asking for a refund. So the Red Sox have the leadoff man on. As Rob Refsnyder stands in. A 1-2 punch of former Rays leading off the Boston lineup today. Refsnyder chases a slider way outside. and He never seemed to have a good feel for that one, but he is retired nevertheless. So Castillo gets... His first out of the third via strikeout. Justin Turner will stand in and take a sinker inside for ball four. So he has reached base both times he has come to the plate today. And stop me if you've heard this before, but all of a sudden, the Red Sox are threatening. As Rafael Dever stands in and takes a circle change for a called third strike. 3-2 count. I'm guessing he was sitting fastball or sinker there, and Castillo just... Hold the string on him there. So excellent pitch. Big strikeout to get. And Masataka Yoshida will stand in with two outs, trying to keep the Red Sox inning alive. He'll follow away a sinker. And so we'll do it again. 3-2 count. Runners will be in motion here with two outs. Yoshida fouls away another one. This one a fastball. Let's see if Castillo will go back to the circle change, just like he did for Devers. He does, and it's grounded right to third. Decent contact, but Crawford has it all the way. He'll throw on to Arenado at first, and Yoshida's retired. And once again, Boston gets a man in scoring position, but cannot convert. The score is still 3-0 Tampa Bay. That's in. Ball two. Yandy Diaz, who singled in his first plate appearance, will step in.
The 2-2 to Diaz after a foul ball. Good pitch. Diaz fights off a sinker that was right on the inside black. Not sure you could put that in a better place. So we'll stay at 2-2. Circle change stays up. But Diaz is way out in front, so he fouls it away. And Whitlock gets him to pop up a sinker. David Hamilton has to kind of run a little, a, you know, a decent ways into foul territory, but he makes the play. So Diaz is retired. Arenado will step in and chop the first pitch he sees over Devers at third, who has been busy. But he is capable, makes the play with ease. So Whitlock gets his second out of the inning. Chris Bryant will stand in, looking to reprise his debut this afternoon, in which he crushed the first pitch he saw for a three-run homer. Bryant's going to bloop one to right. But no trouble there for Ref Snyder. Makes the play. And the Rays go 1-2-3 in the bottom of the third. We head to the fourth. Still 3-0 Tampa Bay is our score. Sedan Rafael will follow away the first pitch he sees. A good slider. And he cannot catch up to a 99-mile-an-hour heater as like, Castillo blows it right by him. And Rafaela is retired. Wong steps in. Castillo wastes no time burning a sinker right on the outside black. Beautiful pitch. And then 100 miles an hour. Here it comes, and there you go. Connor Wong is retired. And Castillo, looking to strike out the side here, will face Kike Hernandez. But he's going to chop one up the middle. Looked like Franco maybe could have dove for it, but Hernandez runs pretty well, so it probably would have been for naught. The ball settles in center field for a two-out hit for the Red Sox. We've gotten a hit every inning so far. But David Hamilton... The nine hitter swings to the first pitch he sees. So just like that, the count's one and two. Nope. Oh, sinker up in the zone, just missed. Impressive take for the Red Sox rookie, especially with two strikes. But he takes again and he shouldn't have for this one. Circle change catches the bottom of the zone. Castillo does strike out the side with a single mixed in there. And we head to the bottom of the fourth. Tampa still leading 3-0. It looks like Kevin Cash will get Yanni Chirinos and Colin Poche warming in the pen. Castillo is pitching well, but between the five hits and a lot of the strikeouts that he's piled up, his pitch count's getting up there. So I don't imagine that Cash will be giving him the hook right now, but it's possible, especially if he gets in trouble that we could see an early end to Castillo's day as Hap takes a couple pitches outside, a couple pitches low, and he works a walk. So Hap is aboard. Jan Gomes strikes to the plate and strikes out very quickly. Did not have any chance really there of picking up the circle change, it appeared. Started to swung before Whitlock even threw the pitch, I think, so Gomes is retired. Brandon Lau will step in. Lau walked in his first plate appearance. Speaking of pitch counts, Whitlock has kind of gotten his under control a little bit after an ominous start. He's at 75, so still not terrific, but given where he was at, he's done a nice job of getting it back in order. As Lau swings through a breaking pitch, but then takes a slider inside, so the count will go full, 3-2 here. Ball's chopped to second. Arroyo's going to try and turn two, but he will not be able to. They get the out at second, so Hap is retired. But Lau is able to leg out his end of the bargain and keep the inning alive for Randy Rosarena. One ball, two strikes. Rosarena takes a circle change in the zone for strike two. And then he's going to line one to second, but Arroyo's got it all the way, so... Some kind of bad luck here for some of the Rays hitters. They've hit 
Some balls pretty hard, but right at the Red Sox. And as we head to the fifth, our score is still just as it was in the bottom of the first. One, uh, three nothing, excuse me, Tampa Bay. Christian Arroyo will start us off and lace a 108 mile an hour off the bat single into center. Excellent piece of hitting there by the Boston leadoff man. And as mentioned, Castillo is already at 94 pitches, so I don't think those relievers will be quieting down anytime soon as Ref Snyder's going to chop one to third on the first pitch he sees. Crawford handles it beautifully over to Lau at second, on to Arenado at first, and that is a 5-4-3 double play. Excellently turned by the Rays, particularly with guys who haven't had a ton of experience working with each other. This is one of the first games that Crawford's played at third and one of the first games Arenado's played at first, so excellent job by the new Rays to make something that may not be as smooth as we would all think look smooth. Justin Turner is going to line one to right. Chris Bryant's got it all the way. Makes the play. So Castillo gets through another inning. We head to the bottom of the fifth. And with that, we see the end of Garrett Whitlock's day. As that pitch count did appear to be enough for him to have to call it quits. So Corey Kluber, longtime starter in the major leagues, now pitching in long relief for Boston, will take over. Kluber, a former Ray. Misses with a slider inside and a circle change outside against Brandon Crawford, so the count goes full. Ooh, good cutter. Backdoored Crawford. And Crawford was hoping for the walk. He, just like Franco did earlier, dropped his bat and started trotting to first, but a bit too optimistic there as the Rays' nine hitter strikes out looking. Wander Franco steps in, probably just trying to make contact, if nothing else. He has struck out looking in both of his at bats today. And quickly finds himself in a 2-2 count. And he will not strike out on this one. He's going to line one to right center. Looks kind of like trouble, and indeed it is. That's off the wall. Rafael tries to grab it, but he can't. Ref Snyder hauls it in. Throw to third, and Franco's retired, trying to stretch a double into a triple. That was clinical execution by the Red Sox there. And Franco was running all the way. It's not like he got a bad break out of the box or anything, but... Excellent work by the Boston outfield and relay team there to cut Franco down. So a double just as quickly as it happened goes away. And Yandy Diaz will stride to the plate with nobody on and two outs here in the fifth. Diaz takes inside but can't check his swing on a 2-1 cutter that was way out of the zone. So the 2-2 to Diaz. Chopped about three feet backwards foul. So just a piece. And not a piece there as Diaz swings through the slurve. So we headed the top of the sixth. Score just as it has been for some time. Remains 3 nothing Tampa Bay. Rafael Devers will pop the first pitch he sees up. Jan Gomes has it all the way. And he puts it away for the first out of the inning. The left number seven, Masataka, Yoshida. Masataka Yoshida. Up to bat next. Swings and misses at a sinker. And then grounds a change up to short. Franco has it all the way. Easy throw over to Arenado at first. And all of a sudden, Castillo may be Settling into a bit of a groove here. He certainly hasn't pitched poorly as he nears six shutout innings. But in more innings than not, he's found himself in some sort of runners and scoring position trouble and then been able to Houdini his way out of it. And true to form, announcers jinx or otherwise, Sedan Rafaela takes a 3-2 pitch and bloops it to right. So Castillo cannot retire the Red Sox 1-2-3. But let's see if he can at least get out of this inning without having anybody get in scoring position. Rafaela is off with the pitch, but Wong fouls it away. So the count will be 1-2 and two against the Boston catcher. An excellent fastball there by Castillo. Blows Wong away. So the Red Sox are retired here in the sixth. 
three, four, five coming up for Tampa Bay as they lead three nothing. After Torino spent a good while getting loose and getting ready, it looks like he's going to be able to sit down as his long relief is hopefully no longer necessary in this game. If it is necessary, we might be here for a while. Looks like Pete Fairbanks is going to start loosening in the Tampa bullpen. As Nolan Arenado smokes one to left center past a diving Enrique Hernandez. Arenado took a big wide turn, but... Rafaela got there in time to cut it off, so. The Rays' first baseman for the day, third baseman normally, is held at first with a single, but a sharply hit single. As Chris Bryant stands in, he's gonna bloop one to left. And that was probably about 80 miles an hour less off the bat than Arenado, but it goes down the same way in the scorebook. The Rays get back-to-back -back singles here to start off the bottom of the sixth. And Kluber, who dominated the Rays in the fifth, is running into some trouble here in the sixth. Ian Happ will foul the first pitch he sees away. And then ground one to third, pass Devers. <clears throat> Yoshida and left came up throwing. <clears throat> So the runners are only going station to station, but the Rays are in business here in the bottom of the sixth. And that business continues as Jan Gomes is going to stroke one to right. That one's going to go all the way and hit the wall. Two runners will score. Gomes will cruise into second. Half over to third. And the Rays blow it open with a two-run double. It's 5-0 Tampa Bay. Excellent piece of hitting there by the veteran catcher. Just sat back and smoked a sinker down into the right field corner. So four consecutive hits by the Rays to start us off. Brandon Lau will step in trying to keep the carousel moving. And as he grounds one to short, it looks like he'll be retired, but half scurries home. So Lau does his job. And Tampa adds another run. It's 6 nothing Rays. Time for another reliever. In this, in this case, another former starter. Nick Pavetta will stand in and immediately give up a sharply hit single to Rose Arena. Oh, bad base running by the Rays, though. Rose Arena smokes one to left. He hit it so hard that Gomes could not score. But Boston's throw back into the infield went awry, so Gomes kind of got big eyes there and started to take off. But that was all for naught as Connor Wong quickly made the play and retired the Rays catcher. So instead of third and first one out, the Rays have runner on first two outs. So a bit of a disappointment there in what has just been an inning full of Delights for the home team. Brandon Crawford fouls away a pitch there, so that counts two and two. Three. And called third strike. Stood there like a house by the side of the road. So the Rays are out of the six, but not before they double their advantage. Five hits. End up tacking on three more runs for Tampa. It's six nothing Rays. does look like Castillo's day will be done. So good outing. Six scoreless after all was said and done. And he'll give way to Colin Poche, who's only appeared in one game so far this year. Pitched one and one-third scoreless innings. So we'll see if Cash maybe hoping Poche can get an inning or two or if they're smooth, heck, maybe he'll even just close out the game and we can call it a day. He's going to get Enrique Hernandez to ground out to third to start us off. David Hamilton will step in. And follow away a 2-2 fastball. Poche does a big sweeping curve and he drops it on Hamilton there. 
as the Sox nine hitter flails away. And two Red Sox are retired here in the top half of the seven. Christian Arroyo, who smoked a single his last time up and has two hits on the day. He's going to line one to left, but Hap has it, makes the play, and it's stretch time with the home team leading seven, or excuse me, six nothing, heading into the bottom of the seventh. Wander Franco, who was thrown out, <clears throat> trying to stretch a double into a triple in his last at bat, will lead us off here in the bottom of the seventh. Two, three spots for the Rays in both the first and the sixth innings. And besides that, not much else. As Franco strikes out looking for the third time today. Gotta think the Rays coaching staff is not happy to see that. Of course it happens, it's baseball, but when you strike out looking three times in one day, you're really not picking the ball up well. So we'll see if they can help Wander kind of tweak that as Diaz swings through a fastball way up and then takes a fastball low. So he's worked the count full. The Rays as a whole have struck out looking a pretty good amount today. And their offense hasn't been bad by any means. Seven hits, six runs, a handful of walks, but... The strikeout lookings are a uh, curious thing as Diaz strikes out, at least not looking. Went too far on a check swing. So two up, two down here in the bottom of the seventh as Nolan Arenado will step in. Look at two pitches outside. So he's got himself a nice count here at 3-1. He's swinging all the way on a fastball. Decent contact. But Yoshida has it all the way. He makes the play and the Rays go 1-2-3 in the bottom of the sixth. Excuse me, bottom of the seventh. We head to the top of the eighth with the score still 6-0 Rays. Rob Ref Snyder's going to ground the first pitch he sees to short. Franco handles it with ease. And the right fielder is retired. Justin Turner will step in. He's going to hit the first pitch he sees to left, and Hap has it all the way. So that kind of dream scenario of Poche maybe throwing two or three innings if he's able to work quickly seems to be coming to fruition here as he's already got two outs here in the top of the eighth. On only 22 pitches. As Devers fouls away a couple pitches and then lines one to left. That's going to be an extra base hit. Gets all the way to the wall. Half is able to track it down quickly, but it doesn't matter. Devers is in the second safely. The Boston third baseman has his first double of the year. And we'll see... With man, another man in scoring position, if the Red Sox can cash it in or if their struggles will continue as Yoshida fouls one away and then takes a sweeping curve outside. The 2-2 to Yoshida's line to third, but Crawford's got it all the way. Decent contact, but even better fielding. And we head to the bottom of the eighth. Your score is still 6-0 Tampa Bay. Chris Bryant homered in his first at bat and had a pitch that was homer worthy there, but it was way out in front of a hanging slider. And then takes a fastball outside, so Bryant will work a walk. Good day for the Tampa Bay right fielder. He's played all over the diamond so far this year. Ian Happ will, Ian Happ will stand in, foul away a fastball. Pavetta tries to paint the outside corner, but misses it a touch. So two and two is the count. And then misses way inside with the fastball. Three, two, the count. I don't think Bryant will be in motion here. And he's not. Hap's going to smoke one to right. That looks like trouble, and it is. It's off the wall. Ref Snyder gets it in quickly, so Hap will get to second, but Bryant has to stay at third but the Rays are in business here again in the eighth half with his second hit of the day Jan Gomes will stand in just trying to get the runner home if nothing else he'll take a slider way outside Gomes doubled down the first baseline 
in his last at bat. So if that was any indication, he certainly is not nervous with runners in scoring position as he takes a fastball low for a strike. He's going to chop one to third. Devers will handle it, but Bryant does trot home. So Tampa adds another run. They've kicked the extra point. It's seven nothing Rays. Brandon Lau takes a fastball high to move the count to two and two. Lollipop knuckle curve. Lau just gets a piece. Like so many at bats for the race today, they've been out in front of breaking pitches. And he was there, but at least was able to foul it off as he takes a fastball high, so the count will go full. Yet another full count for Boston pitching. And that one's way outside. He tried a knuckle curve, and maybe he was trying to paint the upper part of the zone with it, but I think it's more likely his grip was just way off there. So Lau works a walk. And the Rays will have men on first and second for Rosa Reynas. He grounds one to third past a diving Devers. That one's going to get into left field. Apple score from second. Lau will dig for third. He's in there. Rosa Reynas into second with a double. And the Rays are pouring it on. It's 8 0 here in the bottom of the eighth. And Alex Cora has seen enough from Pavetta as he's going to give way to Joely Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets a swinging strike from Brandon Crawford. And gets another swinging strike on the way to a strikeout. So the lefty-lefty matchup is won by the Red Sox pitcher there. Crawford was way out in front of that slider. And Wander Franco, who certainly had a... Uh, a controversial day. Three struck out three strikeouts looking and a double that turned into an out because it was an attempt to turn it into a triple. He'll follow away the first couple pitches he sees. It looks like he's swinging away no matter what. And you gotta give him credit at least for that. Not gonna go down the same way he has been if he's going down. Follows away his third pitch in a row, this at bat. So he's getting some hacks in, that's for sure. And the fourth pitch that he sees is the one that fools him. Slider gets him. Franco has a golden sombrero, but the Rays tack on two more runs. It's 8 nothing as we head to the top of the ninth. The first pitch that Rafaela sees is going to be grounded to second. Lau is there all the way. Makes the play with ease. One away. Connor Wong will step in and pop up the first pitch he's going to see. Poche has been mowing the Red Sox down with very little resistance. So just like that, Boston's down to their final out. And after Enrique Hernandez swings through the first pitch he sees, they're down to their final strike here this afternoon. Enrique's... Oh, no. H Hernandez, excuse me, he's going to bloop one to right. Chris Bryant, a bit overzealous, tries to make a spectacular diving play. And in doing so, the ball is going to get past him and go all the way to the wall. So Hernandez has a double. And the Red Sox are not done just yet. you got to think, I mean, I understand why Bryant wanted to flash the leather, especially given that he's not really known for that as much. And, you know, complete a fantastic day as Yoshida, or excuse me, David Hamilton is going to ground one down the left field line. That is going to break the shutout. So down to their final strike, the Red Sox are still swinging. As Hamilton has his first career double in the majors. Lefty-lefty matchup is won by the Red Sox yet again. But like I was saying with Bryant, you know, I understand his desire to want to make a play and end the game in style, but with an 8 nothing lead, you got to think, hey, just take the kind of like safe approach, let it be a single, and we can all move on. Christian Arroyo will fly to center. A Rosarina's got it all the way. And Poche does indeed finish out the game with three strong innings. Tampa, an outstanding performance on both sides of the ball today. They're going to take this one 8 to 1 and salvage a split of this four-game series with their interdivision rivals.
So 10 hits apiece, but the Rays made their count a lot more than Boston did. And with that, thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Have a beautiful evening. The final line score for this afternoon's ball game for the victorious Rays. Eight runs, ten hits, no errors. They left five men on base. For the Red Sox, one run on ten hits, no errors. They left nine runners on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and 